This episode of Capes and Lunatics is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. me hearties and welcome once again to full stream ahead i am your captain charlie the professor esser and with me as always is my first mate and skinny rich friend it's maz hey maz oh welcome once again to agent carter season two episode nine a little song and dance Peggy desperately tries to save Dr. Wilkes with a dangerous plan to stop Whitney Frost, but Thompson makes a surprising move that could destroy them all. Our director this week is Jennifer Getzinger. Hmm. Stanley and Jack Kirby, of course, have those based on Marvel Comics by credits. Um, uh, writing, uh, they got Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely with our created buys. Our teleplay by this week is Chris Dingus. The story by is from Michelle Fazikas and Tara Butters. And then Sue Chung and Eric Pearson are our executive story editors. Two executive story editors over that hardest working woman in show business, Lindsay Allen, Hmm. our regular old story editor. Okay, and this... Yes. I'm sorry, what? I said you need those. You need those. Well, you know, the, she, there's so much she has to do being so hardworking, she actually needs two executives over her to make sure that it's just so much they have to supervise. <laughs> One executive story editor could not supervise as much story editing as she does. So wow. that working woman in show business, Moss. Okay, getting back to the actual story. <laughs> Um, a little song and dance. And of course, as the title implies, we open with a big musical number. Da 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 da. da. Um, how do you feel about big musical numbers, Maz? As long as they're in a dream, I'm perfectly fine with them. Okay, okay. I don't think I've ever had a musical dream. So they. I don't think they, I have either. Yeah, so even when they're in a dream, it's, it's kind of odd to me. Yeah. Um,. You know, so, but it's, it's fine. It's, it's a showpiece. They wanted to do it and they wanted to do that so they could get to the end gag at the end of it. But mm. we also, and also most importantly in this, we actually were able to get Angie into this series. Angie? Angie! Um, our, our, remember the waitress, actress, waitress? Oh, 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 gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. In season yeah, one? Yeah, yeah. 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 Now we've been, I, you know, every, I remember when we, when it was first announced that they were going to California, everyone was like, oh, that's going to be so great. Angie's going to be exploring life as a Hollywood actress and da 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 and da 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 Nope. No Angie to the last episode. Or, I'm sorry, the penultimate episode. Take a drink. And, um, you know, we get our song and dance about, you know, you're torn between two lovers, yada, yada, yada. Um, we get a little bit from, um, from Dottie in this, you know, where she says, oh, come on, Peg, I'm always in your head, which <laughs> was delightful. And then, uh, you know, Jarvis comes in to break it up. And then, of course, Rose comes in and says, I'm sorry, you're just not right for the hour about talent agency. And then she wakes up in the back of the van with Jarvis because they had been captured. Um... Because as we saw last episode, uh, Jarvis tried to shoot um, Whitney and actually succeeded in it for all the good it did. And <laughs> um, Whitney basically realized that in order to control Wilkes, she needs to have Peggy under control as well. Because, you know, he loves her. That's how it goes in Hollywood. Hmm. And... 
it's it's yeah uh, that, that that relationship and I really think that relationship never gets properly resolved in these last two episodes but we'll get to that no. next episode because at this time Wilkes is still a villain Wilkes is still a bad guy and I think that's important because I think throughout most of this episode everyone is like why are you defending this man is it just because you've got a thing for him and in truth, I don't know how I feel about that. Because I don't know exactly where 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 Peggy's loyalty is. Well, I do know where her loyalty is on that. She is very uh, against killing. Even people like Frost and Kurtwood Smith. Although, in, in, uh, in the moment... Yeah. I, think, I think she sees redemption, and she's a fan of that. And I think she also sees his value as a the person he was. Mm-hmm. If you can find a way to get him back to that, isn't that what we should all be aiming for? Yeah, I guess so. But at the same time, it's a big risk to take when we're dealing with lots and lots of zero matter, because that is the that is the problem of the week in this is that we have a surplus of zero matter that wants to devour the universe. Um, hmm. In this um, in this moment, uh, Peggy and Jarvis do escape. Um, the the truck uh, and do have their own little confrontation as they go, mm-hmm. but um, meanwhile over with Thompson and um and uh, Souza yeah. and Samberly Samberly they realize they're starting to worry that you know what happened to them um they disappeared and uh, were left out here in the desert to die um. When they see the SSR truck car coming, but they realize it's Kurtwood Smith's men. And Thompson, of course, quickly realizes, as does Sousa, that they're not coming to to uh, save them at, or to take them back to holding that they're probably going to put them in the hole, or that they're probably going to put them in a hole in the desert. Right. They're simply Which, loose ends at this point. Yes. But this is where Thompson comes starts his plan and starts I think showing his value hmm. um, you know I think uh, I, I know there'll be some disagreement about this uh, maybe this episode maybe next episode but I think in this moment he does he understands and this I think is where you get the basic disconnect between someone like Thompson and someone like Peggy Peggy is an idealist and Thompson is not because Thompson understands, or at least Thompson is thinking about the angles and the compromises and what needs to be done to get them to the next step. Because essentially what he does is he portrays himself as, you know, the person who captured um, Samber- Samberly and Sousa mm. instead of as their co-conspirator, which arguably just... You know, and I, I can see one can see how this looks like he might just be saving his skin, but we do see that he does have a broader plan, and is quite manipulative in the way he deals with everybody. You know, I I, I think I, I like Sousa's story in this, not Sousa, but uh, Tom Tompkins Thompson's story in this, specifically because he. Shows that he understands how to work with people, understands how to to tell them what they want to hear to get them to do what he wants. And right. I think that's a positive thing, and especially for a person in the game that he's in. Right. I mean, because, but because it's on the bottom of the barrel for looking for things uh, to you know take pride in in Thompson for. Well, you know, I mean. I take, I mean, I'm, I'm very proud of Whitney Frost in this as well. You know, yeah. I think that she is pretty awesome for everything she does. But you know, she is venial and manipulative and 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 a monster too. Right, but, but she has a code. She has, you know, a, a, a guideline of ethics that she lives by. Thompson I, is with moment to moment, whatever is most convenient. Well, I think I think that Thompson has a code as well, and I think it is, yes, I think it is a, is it is a code that says what's best for Thompson. But I don't think Whitney's is anything other than what's best for Whitney. 
And like this is what I was going to say. I like the fact that what Thompson does, he puts himself in a situation where if it ever goes south, he has an out, but he's also planning on what is the most, what is, what will do the most good and solve our problems and also keep me safe. I think and any decision he makes aimed in that direction is something he accidentally falls upon. It's like the last resort. I might as well do it. It'll do some good too. That's how I see it. No, see, I think that it's very intentional and deliberate from from his initial um, talking, you know, the 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 guards into taking uh, and uh, Samberly back with him, talking. Um, I mean, he had no other choice in that moment. Yeah, he did. Do he what? He knew they were there to kill did. him too. He knew they were there to kill him too, because he had already run out on. Uh, 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 um, What's his name? The general. He'd yeah, already turned well, his back on him, and he knew he, they were there to kill him too. And they said as much to him. Hey, listen, we were here to send to kill you too. So it was an act of self-preservation. He really had no choice. Well, it was an act of self-preservation. What I'm saying is his act of self-preservation, if it was truly venial, he could have said, he said I don't know what you're talking about. Um, I don't recall that. Remember, he had his brain wiped. He didn't recall what he had done. And the fact of the matter is, is he could have then just shot Souza and said, you know, I still you know, think we need Sam. It's a better solution. It's like uh, he was backed into a good decision every time. That's what I think. Well, you know, but, you know, um, <laughs> so long as he comes to a good decision, I don't know if it's a problem that he was backed into it, you know. As, yeah, I know. As, as, you know he's, he's a good person and not States. just a lazy person that occasionally lazes himself into the same direction as good. Well, no, because I think it would be much easier for him to to do the full heel turn. And no, I, I think, think the heel turn would have been more work in this situation. Well, I get the feeling that for because if he turned on them, then they would have said, "No, he's not here capturing us." You know, uh, right? He was helping us. Yeah, so but he then that just gets all three of them killed, and right, know. as opposed to just the two of them. But That's why he couldn't turn yeah. on them. In unless he sh- and here's what I'll say. Unless he shoots Sousa first. Right, exactly. And if it's he like if he can get away Sousa, without shooting, he, he's not an evil person. He's just a you know a lazy coward. Yeah, well, you know, fair enough. Because I'm not going to deny that he's not a lazy coward, but I'm also say I'm impressed by the by the by the plan he has laid. Hmm. I I think he built out a very smart and intricate plan. Sure. With a lot of double crosses, to be sure. But all double crosses that I think in the end serve himself as they're serving the story. And and to put it simply, without his double crosses, I think Peggy would have gotten them all killed. Because right. I think their original plan, which is – here's what I'm going to say. Their original plan was, okay, um, Kurtwood's going to shoot uh, Whitney, um, which we don't even know if that's going to – work all we know is that maybe it, it's going to knock the, uh, the 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 zero matter out of her but you know even in that it's just this it's just this attempt to attack her which may and and, the, and which may cause her to attack and if it basically if it doesn't work she's going to kill all of them plus it puts them in in debt to Kurtwood Smith meaning that He's always going to have something over them. And he realizes the only way any of us get out of this is if we can take out Kurtwood and Whitney with extreme prejudice right now. Because mm-hmm. Whitney is a real danger, not just an esoteric danger, but a real danger to all of us, mm-hmm. to the world, is, is the argument. And so, yeah, he needs to do that. And then he also knows... That quite frankly, the arena club is a danger to everyone as well, and take and, and they're already you know already disheveled. But you know if we can take out Kurtwood, that gives us some strength too. So I, I think the idea of I think Thompson's plan, although yes, it was definitely here's what I'll say: Kurtwood's plan was the kind of plan that I think Peggy would have come up with from the way she says how she would be. Because, you know, we saw when, when Wilkes, um, you know, threatens Peggy, she says, well, you should have let me, let him shoot me, hmm. because I would never, 
you know, I would, you know, you you always let the other person die if it progresses the mission. For the good of the mission, you let the other person die. And that is, you know, that is how Peggy may say she wants to be. But as we see through this, she's not. You know, she is, she is softer than that. But getting back to the actual story, um, Peggy and the gang uh, do get back to, well, Peggy and Jarvis do get back to SSR headquarters where she immediately starts to pummel poor Kurt Woodsmith. Um, <laughs> love you too, Tristan. Which is, which is both comedic and scary, because it really looks like she's going to kill this old man. Because, you know, not for nothing, she is a I'm highly... I'm surprised he wasn't much worse for the wear. Yeah, well, you know... Like, there was no blood, no bruising. I was like, man, she looked like she went to town on his face. Yeah, well, like, maybe he's really good at, you know... <laughs> Rolling with the punches. I don't know, yes. but yes, you, you should have seen it, it. You know, it would have made the story much more complex. Hmm. Or maybe Peggy's just is good enough to know how to hurt you without leaving a bruise. Fair enough. You know, she's got those kung fu moves. Um, but yeah, and that's where we do see Thompson's plan start to play out, which is, oh, we're going to. And that's what, see, I like this episode again. Like I said, I really feel this is Thompson's episode. Hmm. I really feel this is where we get to give Thompson this really strong arc where, yes, he's venal, he's cowardly, whatever, but he's also intelligent and a planner. And you see that he's more than just a big dumb guy who can beat people up. You can see that he's more than just, you know, a loud, a, a, a person who can. Sh- shout orders out through a bullhorn, he's a guy who can actually plan and strategize. And his plan is, you know, that what they, what they say. He tells, you know, we need to take out... He, he, he appeals to Kirkwood by playing to his vanity, saying, you know, you don't like taking you know, orders from this woman. Let's blast her with the gamma cannon. You know, we'll bring her the gamma cannon. We'll, we'll, we'll blast her with it, knock the, you know, knock the zero matter right out of her. You know, bring her down to our level, and then take take her from take it from there. Arrest her and deal with that. Meanwhile, when he go then goes to Whitney, he sells out Kurtwood, explains what the plan is, and then you know says, "I want to be on the council, and I want this and the other," and plays into her senses of, "Oh, this is you know a venial, power hungry monster. I can I can I can work with that." Hmm. And then the third act is, is no, actually he was playing both of them because his plan is to have Samberly turn the uh, gamma device into a bomb to blow them both up and essentially save the day. Uh, and of course this goes wrong because she, he, because Peggy goes to get Wilkes and Wilkes says, don't save me. You leave. I can't be saved. I have this too much dark matter in in me, and I can't leave because if I leave, it is already going to tear me apart. And Peggy and probably going to kill a lot of people. Exactly, and that's what he was saying. He's like, "Look, you have got to leave. This is not safe. I have to be here." And okay, if he blows up the gamma thing, maybe that'll take me out too, and that would be a good thing. And Peggy is willing, arguably, to sacrifice everyone for this one person who has already turned on them once, you know, for what it's worth, you know, um, you know, for all of the, for, for everything that Thompson has done, he's never turned on anyone in the SSR, you know, he's never actually done a full villainous turn to, I'm going to work with the bad guys, you know, every time he's made a venial or a petty choice or a cowardly choice, it was always, in, in its own way, in the service of a greater good or a greater idea of good. And Wilkes, you know, when he betrays them, he really has betrayed them because he wants to figure out what's going on and get to the answers of his powers. And now, once he gets well, it, he realizes... Maybe he was a bit seduced by the idea of so much power and being able to control it, too. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of, there's lots of side aspects to it. I'm just saying, you know, it... It's it's a mistake to think of you know Thompson's plan as being bad just because he doesn't mind that Wilkes dies in this too 
because mm-hmm. Wilkes has already betrayed them once. Right. And in fact, Samberly makes the point, isn't he with the bad guys now? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't we just go over this? And But it goes into that whole idea that she does not want to sacrifice these people. You know, she's okay to sacrifice the, bad, the other people, but not for not mm-hmm. for this one. Although she was never even that good with sacrificing them, which is the point she made. She would rather bring Coward Smith to justice. She would rather bring Whitney Frost to justice if they can find a way to do that. The only reason why she's tolerating is it because she does understand there really was no way to bring them to justice. So that was the split decision, um, literally, because, you know, Seuss is the deciding vote on it, but she draws the line at Wilkes. And, you know, they go uh, and they have this little confrontation where basically they have this discussion that if we do not kill Whitney and Kurtwood, you know, and what he says is like, look, Whitney is killing Kurtwood right now, and I'm going to hit this button, and that's going to, as soon as, because as soon as I get clear, I'm going to hit the button, that's going to kill them. And then he realizes it doesn't work, realizes it's them, goes, goes and confronts Samberly and um, Sousa, and that's where they have their big confrontation. Uh, Peggy's got her gun out. She's going to shoot uh, uh, Tompkins or Tompin, Thompson. Thompson says, you know, I'm going to push the button. And then the explosion happens. Hmm. And um, that's where – well, actually, the ex- explosion doesn't happen. What actually happens is we see Wilkes come out of the room he locked himself in uh, because just prior to this um, – uh, Kurtwood is um, has been uh, as he is being killed by Whitney. She stops because she realizes he's smiling, and he says, "Because they got you too." And then she turns around and realizes that the gamma bomb is armed. And then just as that happens, that's when Wilkes comes in and explodes in uh, zero matter, and then everything goes to black. And then we come back to it next week, Maz. Mm. Dun dun dun! It ends on a cliffhanger. What happened? We don't know. We'll never know. <laughs> we'll never know. Uh, well, actually, we will know because there's one more episode after this penultimate episode. Take a drink. Oh, is um, that the, uh, the the little short? No, the next episode is the final episode. That's what I'm saying. But whatever happens at the end of that episode, we never get hmm. inkling as to who did it or no, why. Never get that. That is the mystery. It ends on. Hmm. Hmm. What a shame. And yeah, it is a shame. Well, it was a shame we never got back to Agent Carter. You know, uh, she wound yeah. up signing on to another TV show. There was a lot of politics with the whole agents thing and whether or not they were going to do another Carter season. Really, her and the woman who played Sif, they all had a lot of. There was a lot of back and forth with with everybody, and especially because Feige was having kind of a tug of war about the future of Marvel with the person who is in charge of Marvel television. Hmm. Um, And so between, you know, eventually it got to be so bad that Disney had to essentially slap them both and say, Feige's in charge. He makes us billions of dollars. You guys shut up and do as you're told. And that gets us to our current era, the Disney Plus era, where Feige is in charge of everything and where... Uh, you know, I think we're going to be getting a lot of great things. So, now the question on everyone's mind is: Does Feige hold a grudge? I don't think he does because I think one thing Feige is going to be doing, which I'll talk about on Super Connectivity this week uh, with Phil, um, is I think he actually is going to be wanting to revisit things that were done poorly, um, but show how they could be done right. I'm with that. And, and I think so we may get some stuff back with, with Carter, and I don't think he's going to just throw out the baby with the bathwater. I think he's going to bring it in, tacitly acknowledge what it was, but then say, but here's 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 the deeper truth, and hmm. take it from there. So we'll see what happens. Are we getting a Punisher movie? I've I don't heard know. rumblings, right? Well, there's always rumblings about a Punisher movie. Basically, at, at, Mar- at, at Disney right now, everything's on the table. Except right now, nothing's on the table because of COVID. <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, back when they were making movies constantly, it was like, yeah, Punisher's a real possibility. Everything's a real possibility. And the reality is everything is still a possibility 
once things sort of start to move back to normalcy and we start to move forward with things, um, as it is, we have to get to that point. Right. You know, so, but for right now, hopefully Foggy's going to come back. Hopefully we'll get resolutions to this. We'll get resolutions to Peggy Carter's story. This, I would love, I mean, I know that there's, there is, there is a demand out there to find out what's going on with Dottie Underwood, you know, and what's going on with how the next episode ends. And, you know, there's a lot going on. But we'll talk about all that next week. Maz, um, any final thoughts on tonight's show? Uh, no, I thought, I thought it was a good one, but uh, I'm really excited to talk about the next one. Yeah, next one is, that's our big, that's our big Hollywood ending, like the title <laughs> says. So, in the meantime, uh, lords and ladies uh, who have been listening to our show, uh, perhaps you're listening on substandard audio equipment, and that is a shame, because there's great things being talked about here. So, why don't you hustle on over to tweakedaudio.com, yeah, it's T-W-E-A-K-E-D-A-U-D-I-O.com. Uh, use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get a discount on any of the high-quality audio equipment you will find over there at TweakedAudio.com. Likewise, you can use that same code over at HuntAKiller.com to basically get an escape room delivered to your house once a week or once a month, which is pretty awesome. Uh, they're even starting a new... Blair Witch themed mystery for you to solve. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that should be exciting. Uh, and of course, if none of that really interests you, you can always go down to the show not- notes, click on the Amazon link, which will take you right to Amazon.com, where you can buy anything you want. And it costs you nothing to buy it there, but it helps us if you click from the link on our show notes. So that's great. And while you're there, check out Pod Life, the book, the book produced by and by and from the Southgate Media Group Empire. Uh, little vignettes written by the men and women of Southgate Media Group uh, about who they are, why they podcast, and how podcasting has and will change the world. And once you've done all that, if you would like to get in touch with us, Maz, how can they do that? Oh, they can email me at mazmanzor at gmail.com or find me on Facebook under Moz Manzor. That's M-O-Z-Z-M-A-N-Z-O-O-R. And, of course, you can always write to me in that old-fashioned email way the way our Moz and Paz once did at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word, at gmail.com. Of course, follow me on the Twitter as I live tweet things that are live when I feel like tweeting them which is not often because nothing's really alive anymore. Hmm. At Charlie Esser. That's C-H-A-R-L-I-E-S-S-E-R. Look for the two E's in the middle. For quality. Bing! Thank you, Maz. All right, you filthy landlubbers. You have come across another wonderful evening walking with us through the world of Peggy Carter. Hmm. Please come aboard again next week. As we once again sail, full stream ahead! <laughs> Arr.